welcome everyone in the Cycles Creative Lab hosted by the 2025 Initiative and the Planetary System Group. Probably I don't have to introduce Antonella. Uh, many of you know her really well throughout the years of cooperation between uh, two of our groups, but still Antonella Nobilio. Uh, she lives in Italy and she is one of the focalizers of the planetary system group. And uh, my dear friend that I'm uh, really happy to welcome today. And um, today we will share about a very special astrological occasion that unfolds in the sky at this time. And uh, with no further ado, I invite Antonella to share with us about this beneficent opportunity. Thank you, dear. Okay, so I can uh, just share my screen. Welcome to everybody. And um, And welcome to this uh, common uh, meditation and uh, contemplation of the signs of the hands of these uh, particular equinox, which are very, very, very important. So first of all, we can uh, read and comment so together the March equinox which will be this 20th at 3 a um 3 8 a.m gmt is the second causal impulse of the annual cycle after the december solstice one and as we know um, for the esoteric astrology is the real beginning of the cycle of evolution of consciousness. But actually in the year of, um, of the earth is the second, starting from the Capricorn solstice. So this is so significant because um, it is exactly between the heliocentric and the geocentric conjunctions of Jupiter and Uranus. Heliocentrically, here um, in the left, on the 14th of March, here are the two big brothers, also with the presence of Mercury. And so um, 14th of March, the sun, uh, the apparent sun, as we know, is in Pisces, still in Pisces, before the equinox. And geocentrically here, it will be on the 21st of April with the sun already in Taurus. So let's remember Pisces and Taurus. And um, this conjunction is the most important causal date of 2024. The beneficial and constructive meeting in Taurus, pure fourth ray of harmony through conflict between Jupiter the principle of the second ray of love wisdom and Uranus, the seventh ray of order and ceremonial magic. Jupiter and Uranus, the planets of beneficent fulfillment as uh, decay defines them, are the two esoteric and exoteric rulers of Aquarius, the sign of the new age. Aquarius innervates according to the esoteric teachings, the hierarchy or planetary heart center. And now Jupiter and Uranus are united in Taurus, which is the sign associated instead to or with the new group of world servers, which is indicated as the planetary Ajna center. So we can say that with this union, 
heart and eye, planetary heart and planetary eye vibrate in unison to guide humanity, the fraud center, the planetary fraud center, to unveil its essential reality, to take responsibility for shining the crown of light. Here is a quote from Hierarchy. Love is the leading creative principle. Love is the crown of light. Um, it's uh, very uh, right to say the crown of light with a conjunction in towers. Ruled by Vulcan, the, as we know, the head center, the solar head center, and uh, towers the abode of light. And so here are our wonderful big brothers. Let's see together their um, constructive, uh, rhythmic and magnificent work. Jupiter and Uranus cycle, the successive heliocentric conjunctions, here you can see them, every 14 years trace a six-pointed, seven-centered star of life, counterclockwise in the zodiac, symbolizing a beneficent fulfillment, an ever-increasing harmony or unity between being the higher triangle and becoming the lower triangle between the world of ideas and the world of forms. A star of life, the seven center and six point star with seven cycles of Jupiter, seven times 12 and six causal impulses or conjunctions of beneficent fulfillment, six times 14, pulses in each breath or cycle or year of Uranus, which counts 84 Earth years. So here we can see that the conjunction in three days, the heliocentric conjunction between them, uh, or 2024, will be here, almost exactly uh, when it appears the last time in 1941, a very crucial, difficult period for humanity as we know and so you can see that uh, the successive conjunction um, are in this sense so 1941 1955 69 83 97 2010 and now here here is a a little uh, video which shows in Italian <laughs> the names of the, the planets. And in this day, 14 of March, we have also the triple conjunction between Venus, Mars, and Pluto in the first degree of Aquarius. So the heliocentric date of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction also sees the, this release of the joint power of Venus, Mars, and Pluto, which immersed in the electric waters of Aquarius cause a spring of life, or the water of life, to gush forth, guiding humanity to, we can say, regeneration. Pluto, Mars, resonating and propagating the initiatory conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn engraved in the same celestial point on the 2nd of November in 2020. For the first time in the sign of the new era, Aquarius, since the 15th century. So this was a date uh, geocentrically, it was at the December solstice of 2020, before the COVID thing, exactly, uh, when we had this 
conjunction the first time in Aquarius. So the second race, third ray, the builders of the solar plan for the first time in the sign of the new age. This can be considered a sign of the flourishing of the new age in the consciousness, in human consciousness. <clears throat> um, we will have uh, four conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn in the next two centuries, every 60 years. So the first it was, was in 2020, the second in 2080, uh, and so on. So as Blavatsky uh, said once, the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in Pisces was the sign of the uh, advent of Christ, of the Christ. So we can infer that the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn are a sign of the uh, reappearance of Christ Maitreya for uh, human consciousness. And the fact that on 14 March, Jupiter and Uranus and Mercury in this position in wonderful trine with this other uh, other triad uh, is really, as you can see, the configuration is like uh, an arrow. It's like uh, it's pointing to Neptune, the Christ, veiling the Christ as initiator of humanity in Pisces, a sign that rules humanity as a whole. So the equinoxes are really important in these years uh, across 2025, because as the sun enters Aries, the earth on the other side enters Libra and is in front of this solar Christ Neptune. So it's really opening the door to the uh, humanity initiation. This is a wonderful quote about the conjunction Pluto, Mars, and Venus from esoteric astrology. There is a relation between Mars and Pluto analogous to that between Venus and the Earth. Esoterically speaking, Mars is the alter ego of Pluto. The activity of Pluto at this time and in this lesser world cycle is very important on account of its esoteric approach to the earth, impelled thereto by the vivification of its life by a display of Martian energy. The earth, Mars and Pluto form an interesting triangle with Venus, fifth ray behind the scene acting as the impelling soul, the solar angel Venus for us, acts towards a rapidly integrating personality. So this is a, a wonderful sign for the integration of uh, personality and soul of humanity. At the dawn of the new age. And such beneficent fulfillment, the conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus and this con triple conjunction of all these planets, through the equinoctial Aries-Libra axis, one of the four initiatory gates that inject and feed the energy of the higher cycles into the Earth's one, the Ea, is marking precisely one of its most shining stages as it is, this equinox, nine months before, so a period of gestation, before the birth or dawn of the imminent 2025, which, as we know, will sanction the progressive externalization of the hierarchy through the one humanity, through the one planetary server. So we can assert free ideas for this conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus, light, love, and order. This is the geocentric chart for the equinox. So geocentric is more 
uh, about the precipitation of the higher causes into the terrestrial field, into the human uh, consciousness. And as you can see, the sun is entering the door of all areas with Vulcan. In the geocentric chart, the sun enters areas propelled by the reunifying and saving force invoked and evoked by Neptune at the edge of Pisces and energized by Pluto and Moon in maximum tension between Aquarius and Leo seems to herald the new planetary spring of 2025. It will be the spring for humanity. It's beautiful to think like that. And this year, even more so for the full moon of 25th March, the Sora Festival of Arias, which intensifies the relationship between Shambhala and humanity, between the head center and the fourth center, the central human presence. In particular, on this equinox, both the position of Mercury, yeah, the Christic or Buddhic principle in man, in his esoteric sign Aries, conjoined to the lunar north node and the healer Chiron, as well as the conjunction of Saturn and Venus in Pisces, as we said, the sign ruling humanity as a whole, in sextile to Jupiter on his nuptial march to Uranus, and they will be one, as we said, on 20, April 21st, guide the one humanity to be the hierarchy of intelligent love, a wise, compassionate, and exact love, according to the law of evolution of the good, the beautiful, and the true. These are therefore times of great purification and reordering for the beginning of a new cycle for a new humanity. And the co-presence of Neptune and Saturn, both heliocentrically and geocentrically, in the abyssal substance of Pisces, second and sixth rays, until 2025, underlines this massive compensation and karmic regeneration to awaken our crown of light. From Rays and Initiations, the texts for the first initiation as far as humanity, the word disciple, is concerned, are well nigh over and the hour of the birth of the Christ as an expression of the fourth kingdom in nature and the consummation of the work of the fourth creative hierarchy is at hand. This there is no gainsaying. The birth hour may be long and the form may be in labor for much time, but the Christ will be born and the nature of the Christ and his consciousness will permeate and color all human affairs. It is this condition so imminent and so desirable and long foretold and anticipated, which will make possible the return of the hierarchy and the restoration of the mysteries. Thus, a great and new movement is proceeding. This will go on until 2025 at the great general assembly of the hierarchy held as usual every century. In 2025, the date in all probability will be set for the first stage of the externalization of the hierarchy. The present cycle from now until that date as we own, is called technically the stage of the forerunner. It is preparatory in nature, testing in its methods. Yes, it is. 
You can see, therefore, that Chuan's masters initiates were disciples. Disciples and aspirants affiliated with the hierarchy are all at this time passing through a cycle of great activity. As a result of the work of the new group of war servers, human beings are progressively awakening to the recognition of a single humanity that heralds the realization of brotherhood. But before it can take form in constructive measures, it is essential that the new group of war servers should itself repeat in the outer world that type of activity which the hierarchy expressed when it developed and materialized the new group of war service in 1925. Through the impression and expression of certain great ideas, men everywhere must be brought to the understanding of the fundamental ideals which will govern the new age. This is the major task of the new group of world service. service. This is a great indication for us. So this is the formula that uh, we inferred uh, from the union between Jupiter and Uranus, the Christ in us, certainty of glory. Glory, light, Taurus, Christ, Jupiter, in us, the seventh ray of Uranus. Okay, so I prepared um, a meditation um, for um, to assert all these um, signs of the heavens in us and in, on the earth through our common heart. But before doing it, uh, it will take, I think, uh, 10 minutes. Um, I invite uh, uh, brothers and sisters to contribute. If anybody or the group that prepare this meeting on the from the silent circle, as it is called, to contribute to this uh, special uh, opportunity to do the will of the heavens. Mm. Grazie, Antonella. <laughs> How beautiful. It will take us a bit to digest all this. However, the, the imminent practical nature of what we are about as a group of world servers is apparent. And thank you for this preparation. As we have entered this three-year cycle of 2024 to 2026, that is profound for us. So the realization of unity among all of us as individuals and within one group and as groups within one group Alexander, yesterday on Triangles, you spoke to this powerfully, uh, relating it to an intergroup, uh, not possibility, but actually we're all in preparation already uh, following the, these cycles and that every planet is in the, has just been or is in the last degrees of the present sign. And you just spoke to it, Antonella. So all the destruction, the chaos, everything as we hold focus as one group, regardless of our working out of it in various groups around the world. Maybe, Alexander, you could speak to that and because it just fits so brilliantly with what Antonella just shared. Yes, indeed. Um, this unfolding conjunction of two rulers of Aquarius uh, happening in Taurus, the sign that rules the new group of world service, is in a way an indication and an invitation for the world group 
to stimulate uh, the actual fabric of the world group, stimulating recognition that the world group is a living organism, is a living being. And in a way, esoteric students as us, we have certain responsibility to stimulate that recognition within the group. It is at this final year of the stage of the far forerunner, it's the time and opportunity for us to recognize living substance that exists between our groups, where each of our groups has own position, has own note, and I dare to say own function. The same as any organ in the human body has own function, same each of our groups has own function, and yet we are connected. We are part of the same organism, living organism of the new group of world service. So this conjunction gives that stimulation uh, for the world group to recognize own position within the planetary body and to come into that position of responsibility. And uh, uh, there are different ways how we can contribute. And uh, one of those ways is to start recognizing each other groups, start learning the note of each group and to learn about uh, work of different groups, joining activities of different groups look for opportunities for coherent cooperation. And one beautiful example of such cooperation is the Global Silent Minute that was initiated in the lead to the festival week of 2019 when three groups resonated together and came up with that brilliant initiative of coming together daily for silent Global Silent Minute. And so there are many other such initiatives that are there and there are potential for such cooperation where each group could, as a star on the sky could form constellations with other groups are numerous. So it is all those activities that contribute into that realization of our connectivity, developing our telepathic unity between all those stars of groups in the, in the sky, so to speak. So mm -hmm. that's invitation that's uh, for all of us. Mm, beautiful. And it's not so often that we gather like this from literally all around the world. So many colleagues, maybe we can go on gallery view. And Antonella, you may wish to speak to the fact that we will be a group of us uh, conjoining around Aries uh, well, each, of course, the high point of the spiritual year, but certainly um, Aries with the Aries Libra axis. And then again at the Sirius Festival of Leo. And many of us are offering our uh, anchoring points on the planet, our centers, our group gatherings, uh, as intentionally connective tissue uh, in the etheric body with these anchoring points. Uh, on the planet, uh, so that we do, as you said, Alexander, take our shared responsibility. This is our moment, as far as uh, this group of world servers is concerned. And we know we're not alone. There are many, many, many. But here we have 52 of us gathered right here. So you know, maybe you want to speak to that. And then can we go on gallery, Alexander, and perhaps people will wish to say something. I have already the gallery view. Well, for those who are in speaker view, it's only the three of us. Now it's only the two of us. So I will have to remove <laughs> us from the spotlight and then we yes, can. Yes, have yes. There we go. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, and uh, thank you, Dot, for reminding um, the other appointment of Leo, because um, the Syrian hierarchy is the prototype, as we are told, of our um, planetary hierarchy. And so the Leo Solar Festival, as uh, it is said, will be the most important festival for the new world religion. So to, to meet in different points, fires on the planet as a prototype of a hierarchical humanity, of a one humanity, is really offering uh, to this unique date of 2025, like a, a fiery chalice, chalice to be ready for the December solstice when the 2025 will begin. So we yes, we have this first fire, electric fire in Aries, and then we have the solar fire of Leo, and then we have the dynamic fire of Sagittarius, which will take to the top, to the summit of the Capricorn solstice, the great beginning of the 2025 portal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There will be, uh, uh, we're preparing now the message inviting uh, groups to organize their own gatherings on the for the Leo festival, for the Sirius festival. Uh, actual physical uh, space gatherings of local and regional groups. And that's we invite us into an experiment connecting those different physically gathered uh, circles into the one circle of circles. That's while each group would do own work during the Leo festival, following own rhythm and own program, uh, we would still hold our telepathic attunement, holding telepathic connection as part of the living organism of the world group. So there will be uh, more information about that, but that's what uh, Antonella and Dot referring to about the uh, opportunity for the expansion of the group consciousness during the Leo festival. So we invite others to comment, ask a question. Uh, the comment I have and to basically to you, Antonella, always lean in your direction uh, astrologically, uh, but it seems the 2026 is so significant within this three-year cycle we've just entered uh, around that bookends 2025. Uh, for two reasons, two huge reasons. One, um, it's a July, the basket or chalice of outer planets in the sky, which it just seems so symbolic and such a receptive point for us to work intentionally with. And Alexander, you shared that gorgeous quote yesterday uh, from the Tibetan master, perhaps that's appropriate, uh, leading up to the festival week, which is the seven festival week in 2026, within which there is a full moon, which we know uh, is exponentially powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah, and also the fact to count the seven year cycle with the seven rays qualities. So we are now living the fifth year of this seven year cycle of the new group of war service of the impact week. So the 2026, 20, it will be uh, the seventh. Uh, and we know that the seventh is really precipitating the will of the first. What was um, launched at the December 2019, it will precipitate as a reality, as a geometry, if you will like, as a pattern, as a 
a living organism. Um, so we are sowing that work actually uh, as a prototype for the new world disciple. And um, yeah, well, how much time do we have? Do we have to stop at what time, Alexander? We have another 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. Excuse and me. Because uh, I, I have the meditation then to group. Yeah. Oh. I'm Gone. sorry. Should I speak or not? Go yes. on. Um, the seven year cycle of the new group of world servers. I recall celebrating in 2012 and there was such a focus on group and on group life, of course, the festival of the new group of world servers. And as 2019 was celebrated, I recall at LifeBridge again, every seven years, um, celebrating the group of groups. It was very poignant, even in the chandeliers that were there, they represented to me that not just group, but a group of groups. And I wish I had on hand a quote from Cosmic Fire that notes in the middle of a paragraph, you know, one sentence that mention, the Tibetan mentions that as group of groups, as groups come together, they come together and they form a petal in this one of the centers of the planetary logos. So I have this vision as the groups coming together, forming a petal within a center. I will look for that quote. <laughs> I have it. It's a beautiful thought, I think. Thank you, Maria Cristina. Yeah. And hopefully in 2026, we can come together as big world group, not just a esoteric group of groups, but as a really world group with all the people working on the front lines of human needs. Oh, working. there's so many. Sufi dancing is wonderful. They celebrate that we are sound. We are each a sound of the universe. We're created by sound. And together we sing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Beautiful. Back to you, Antonella. So we, we would love to experience the meditation. Yeah. It's based on sound, actually, on and intervals from the science of harmonics that we have been experiencing since uh, some decades now. So probably we uh, can uh, turn off our videos now. Probably. Yeah, thank you for reminding. So you will hear different voices from this group called uh, the planetary system or planetary order prototype, which works on the seven rays uh, matrix. Um, So the ritual consists of two parts. The first aims to take the place of fire in the center of centers, the point of tension as one planetary server, as the central human presence at the center of the planetary triad, Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity. 
in the eye of the triangle. The second part asserts, asserts the seven ray energies and formulas of the planetary human order of the one humanity. Then the great invocation seals our work in different languages. We are one, here and now, everywhere and always. We are the central human presence. We are the new group of world servers in communion with all men of goodwill. We are one, here and now, everywhere and always. At the center and from the center, we assert the central 
human presence. Power, Shambhala. Love, hierarchy. Light, one humanity. Humanity is will, is love, is light. Humanity is harmony, is thought, is one. Humanity is order.
The planetary order asserts the plan of love and light. Sono la presenza umana centrale. I am in the heart of Christ. J'illumine l'intention planétaire. Desde el lugar del fuego, contemplo y reflejo el modelo. Yo för in planen i människornas tankevärld. Reconduzo a cultura do céu. Я излучаю иерархический порядок. Du point de lumière dans la pensée de Dieu, que la lumière afflue dans la pensée des hommes, que la lumière descende sur la terre. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. Dal centro, ove il volere di Dio è conosciuto, il proposito guidi i piccoli voleri degli uomini, il proposito che i maestri conoscono e servono. Desde il centro che chiamiamo la raza de los hombres, che se realice il plan de amor e de luz, e selle la puerta donde se halla il mal. Lotius, o amor e magustestva. Restore the plan on earth. Oh.